seven questions Brits always ask me about America and its people. Really interested to get into this video, see what kind of questions there is, and see what it has to say about them. Before we do, I appreciate if you guys can hit that subscribe button. Let's just straight to this and see what we got. Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains questions. to questions. Specifically, questions that British people ask me about the United States and right. its people. Lived in the United States now for ages. I do indeed get a lot of questions from people back home. Such as, ooh, Lawrence, do you think you'll ever develop an American accent? Or, why is our... You know what? For how long he's been in America, I'm very surprised his accent hasn't developed, dude. Arkansas, pronounced Arkansas, not Arkansas. I did a YouTube short about it already. Arkansas. So I'm drawing on all of my expertise of living in the United States to answer questions like these today. So that right. maybe all of the British friends and family members that are asking these questions finally shut the f*** up. That said, <laughs> I really like people and... Yo, you never know. These might be some of the questions I wanted to ask. Since we're on our way to a million subscribers, if you're not yet one Yo, of them, do that now. His link will be in the description. In the meantime, here are seven of the most common questions that I get asked by British people about America and Americans. Okay. Why do Americans call their sport football? <laughs> this is the first one. Of course Number one, is. why do Americans call their sport football when they don't use their feet? Well, firstly, that's not entirely true. I mean, I think we've all seen it where a player right. takes the ball, puts it down, and kicks, kicks it. it in slow motion that might just be in the movies and everybody goes crazy so it must be an important part of the sport but secondly i did some googling and i found out that it's called football because of the sports from which it's derived see back in the 19th century britain was developing a series of ball games okay. one of them famously was soccer or to give it its full name association football yo that's true bro the uk called our football soccer first Bro, that's crazy when you think about it. Because, like, you, so many... I, it don't bother me, but so many Brits would be like, it's not soccer, it's football. But then again, we called it soccer first. <laughs> and this was called association football because they had to differentiate it from something else called rugby football. Okay. Rugby football did indeed go by the name of rugby football. And, in fact, sometimes oh. does to this day. Despite oh. the fact that they, too, don't use their feet unless they kick it over a giant H or down the field or maybe some other ways. And American style football basically took its cues from rugby football and the name stuck. Yo, I never knew that rugby football, well, rugby was called rugby football. Interesting. Why is American bread so sweet? You know what? I want to try American bread because I like sweet things. I want to see how sweet the bread actually is because I've heard of this. All right, this question I get a lot. Why is American bread so sweet? And we have to make a bit of a distinction here because the bread that we're talking about is the kind of store-bought bread that you get in supermarkets that okay. are used for sandwiches. And it's true. One of my earliest experiences in this country was raiding my mother-in-law's bread bin when I was hungry late at night. And I was really excited because, as everybody knows, there's nothing better than bread and butter at midnight. Ooh, bread and butter is me. good. Right. But it was really sweet. It was almost like I was having a late-night dessert. And basically, this additional sweetness on American bread comes down to one word yo do you know what's weird is like Bring i'm pretty sure to... in the uk we you you never see butter like this bro in fact we do have packs of butter but normally i get like the tub ones right to me this was like cheese like a block of cheese bro <laughs> dessert and basically this additional sweetness on american bread comes down to one word added sugar that's two words and it's true as somebody who gave up added sugar well, a couple of years good. ago i was shocked to find just how much added sugar was found in american bread two grams of added sugar oh, i love lathering my butt around my toast but the thing is right it just melts all the time that looks good bro that, that looks like it's not melting What's in that? Years ago, I was shocked to find just how much added sugar was found in American bread. Two grams of added sugar, which is 4%. Three grams of added sugar, 6%. Now, there's a couple of things to add here beyond sugar. Number one, the addition of added sugar is supposedly intentional in order to prolong the life of the bread. And okay. pound for pound, I have found that American bread takes a bit longer to turn green. I was a student in England, so I've got a lot of experience in this field. But the <laughs> you other know thing what? Yo, I'm with you on that one, man. I don't know what it is. But I'll buy bread and I'll just forget about the bread. And I'm like, oh, damn. I got to clear that out in that cupboard, bro. <laughs> thing to point out is not all American bread is sweet. Since giving up added sugar, I've mostly turned to sourdough or rye. Some of which have zero added Don't sugar, which tastes great with some strawberry jam, Oof. which I've just realized has added sugar. 
Are you scared of all the guns? Well, what if he owns any actually? Number three, are you scared of all the guns? And I would say not all of them. I used to love the Super Soaker 5000. <laughs> and in fact, it's a weird one this because while guns are definitely used to kill more people in America than right. they are in Britain, I don't particularly live in fear of them because number one, I'm an optimist. Some would say a blind optimist. And number two, so long as you stay in the right part of town and or don't become a member of a gang, there's right. a good chance that you can go 16 <laughs> years living in America without seeing gun violence oh, wow. first hand. Now that's well, not yeah, to say of course. course that America hasn't had many, many 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 well documented mass shooting events and these of course and i can't lie i've seen quite a lot of them dude i'm telling you though you know if i moved to america yo i would definitely have a james bond rack <laughs> just full of like the coolest guns bro but that's because i like, i'm so into like games with guns and to me it would just like regardless of your feelings towards them they are badass, bro, and they are cool. If you're sensible with them, of course. If you're sensible. The ones that are idiots, bro, bro, they just make it bad for everyone else. But you got idiots all across the world. You got people using guns in bad ways in America. You got people using knives in bad ways in the UK, you know what I'm saying? Terrific as they are, paint a picture that there are shootings on every corner of every city at every second of every day. I don't want to come here with that false impression because otherwise you won't ever leave your hotel. And I can hear <laughs> my Uncle Toby right now. But Lawrence, there are 30,000 gun-related deaths in America every year. That's and that a is lot. a big number. But you have to keep in mind that unfortunately, over half of those are suicides. Oh. But even though this is a very serious subject, I wanted to answer it. Because while there clearly are people in this country who will pick up a gun and do the unthinkable, right. the chances of dying in this way during a given year, never mind a two-week visit, are approximately 1 in 32,000. So don't worry too much and just be vigilant. Okay, can we get back to the comedy stuff now? <laughs> do Americans think you know the queen? <laughs> Yo! Yo, yo, yo. Wait, that's a British person. That's a... Do Ameri Wait, surely Americans don't think we know, because we're in the UK, we know the Queen. Thanks. What, the next... what, know the Queen on like a personal level or just know of the Queen? Next question. Oh, get this all the time. Rest Do Americans queen, think you know the Queen? No, because she's dead. But also, despite this being a kind of stereotype of Americans, I've received this question or a question along these lines precisely once. I was right. in a training class back when I worked in a call centre and in those call centre training classes, you get a big mishmash of many different types of people. Okay. I was put with this one fellow who was weirdly obsessed with my accent, who kept bombarding me with questions, one of which was, why do you call soccer football? <laughs> Happens in reverse. And his question was something along the lines of, did you used to live near the Queen? And even though I don't think he meant it in this way, I suppose, relatively speaking, I did, because I lived in London. She lived in London. Okay. We were like buddies. But Neighbors. I got the sense that he meant, did you live in the same apartment complex? And the thought of the Queen paying rent is quite laughable <laughs> because she's dead. Yo, 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 shit, bro. <laughs> Even when she was alive, the thought of her paying rent is crazy, dude. Why is it called the World Series? Huh? Oh, is this on about the baseball sport? Where, you know what? I mentioned this on my stream and like, some of you Americans didn't even know that was a thing. So baseball, you have a World Series that only you participate. And I think Canada as well. But you guys win the World Series all the time. <laughs> Spot. Why is it called the World Series when only Americans play? And once again, <laughs> that is completely and utterly a little bit false. Because it's not just American teams. Okay. There's a Canadian one as well. And secondly, I need to dispel a myth. For the longest time, it was believed that the baseball competition's name came from the fact that they were sponsored by the New York World Telegram newspaper. The oh. assertion being that they took the word world, try saying that after four whiskeys, and named it world. that with utterly no pretension of being a global competition. But that theory has since been debunked. Instead, the real origin of the name is this. In 1903, the owner of the Pittsburgh Pirates challenged his counterpart at the Boston Red Sox to what he dubbed a World Championship Series. Because at the time, the Pirates were the best team in the National League and the Red Sox were the best team in the American League. Okay. Why the National League and the American League don't mean the same thing, I, I'll never know. Yeah. But it seems like he used it ironically and it sort of just stuck and then evolved into the World Series. Uh, you know what is smart, bro? Because you always want to be the best in the world or something. So the fact that your tournament is you and just one other Canadian team, right? 
the chance of you being the best in the world is so high. Yo, we should do that in the UK, man. We should make a sport where the world is just us. <laughs> there is, of course, a baseball competition that does include different countries, and that is the World Baseball Classic, which is sort of like a dime okay. store version of the FIFA World Cup, but with baseball. Yo, does America win that as well? What, what other countries are big on baseball? I don't even know. Why do Americans tell you their home state before their home country? Hmm. Why do American tourists in Britain tell you the state they're from before okay. they name their country? Okay. And I too have experience with this because when I met my American wife over in England, my first words to her were, Hi, I'm Lawrence. I was named after the actor Lawrence Olivier. Isn't Wait, that is true actually now that I think about it. Like if I ask someone, I I'm thinking about in my stream, right? Because it's live and I have conversations with people all over the globe, right? So whenever I ask someone where they're from, they will always say the country. But the Americans, they will say the state, like California, Texas. You know what I'm saying? Is that because the states are as big as countries? <laughs> That's interesting, though, to think about, actually. Then, my first words to her were, Hi, I'm Lawrence. I was named after the actor Lawrence Olivier. Isn't that impressive? But my second words to her were, Where are you from? To which she answered, right. Indiana. And I've never asked her about that. Maybe she said Indiana because I assumed from her accent that she was from the United States. But okay. actually, when I asked her it, I remember thinking, well, you could be Canadian. I could end up looking like a right numpty if I... Yo, that is so... Yeah, I'm curious. Let me know in the comments why you guys do that. Very interesting. Because if someone asked where I'm from, I would never say Nottingham. I would always say England, you know what I'm saying? But I'm guessing you guys would say the state first. Assume your Americanness, But equally, for those of us who have a bit of geographical now, I know from the answer Indiana that she is from the United States. The problem is True. not everybody in Britain knows all of the 50 states. That is also Not everybody true. in America does come to that. So I suppose in some ways it is kind of weird. But then on the other hand, I think Americans do carry a little bit of pride in their roots, as in where they came from, not their right. hair. Although in my <laughs> wife's case, both. And so maybe it's a manifestation of that. It's sort of like when Americans go around wearing their college jumpers slash sweaters. Because I think it might... Yeah, you guys are a lot more pride and passionate about like the place you actually came from. Do you know what I mean? Um, and your college football explains that loads. We're not too big on our college or small location. Bro, I honestly think it just comes down to the fact that how big the states are, bro. The states, bro, America to me is like 50 countries. <laughs> I can't unsee that, bro. Like when Americans go around wearing so their college jumpers slash sweaters. Because I think it might be to Americans a status symbol. I've no idea actually why they do that. Sorry, I've just made most of that up. <laughs> Let me know in the comments why you do it if you do. Yeah, actually, I'm curious. there's a decent chance that you don't because of this. Why don't most Americans have a passport? Why don't many Americans own passports? Well, as I said in a video that I did all about this a few years ago, the answer is multifaceted. Firstly, while only 42% of Americans own a passport okay. compared to 86% of Brits, significantly more Americans these days do own a passport than- Yo, this has to come down to size again. Bro, of course 86% in the UK owns a passport because we need, bro, if we want to go on holiday or go to somewhere nice, we need to go out of the UK. Where's that? America is 50 countries, bro, in one. You know what I'm saying? You guys could just travel within America and be not, you know what I mean? You've got everything in there. You've got cold weather, skiing resorts, hot weather. Do you know what I mean? Like holiday, like, like, bro, like beach weather. You, you know what I'm saying? You got everything there, dude. Everything. Whereas like, bro, UK, we got to leave the UK. We have to. <laughs> and they did 30 years ago, which was approximately when I first started hearing about this stereotype. And secondly, there's this perception that America is so huge and packed with variety right. that you could just do all of your traveling here. And while that isn't right. necessarily an idea that I subscribe to, it is one that many Americans do. And because arguably way more Americans than Brits have family members and friends that live a thousand miles away in the same country. Mad. Sometimes in order to see them, that necessitates that they take a whole holiday within the country but it's not cheap you know domestic flights can get up to a thousand dollars so wait, wait 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 oh wait no never mind i was gonna say you don't need a passport to travel within america right you only need one traveling out oh weird I i've never traveled within the country you know what i mean i never got a plane from the uk to the uk there's no point 
So I don't know how exactly it works. You don't need a passport, right? So that would be one of the other reasons that a lot of Americans don't travel internationally is they simply can't afford it. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 Lawrence. But isn't it also down to a lack of curiosity on the part of Americans? And I think it would be hard to argue that there isn't an element of that. But that just comes down to what they're exposed to. If you compare the news cycles of both Britain and America, the BBC reports on countries from all over the world, even countries that don't have oil. How mad is that? <laughs> Whereas when America provides international reports, it's usually on countries that they have a vested interest in due okay. to their foreign policy. So I think America just isn't exposed to other countries as much. And this is heightened, of course, by the fact that they are bordered only by Mexico and Canada. If you go right. over to Britain, we're bordered by the sea but then the rest of europe with all of the countries that come with that now that's not to say that no americans travel abroad otherwise i wouldn't have met my wife and or moved to the united states and started this very channel true so i'm glad she did Final words. Well, if I've learned anything today, it's that on YouTube, you can talk about guns and bread in the same video. <laughs> but I've also learned that I didn't share housing facilities with the Queen. Let me know in the comments what- Really enjoyed that video. You guys definitely gotta let me know what you think in the comment section, especially the things I wanna know more. If you guys did enjoy, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe for more content. I'm live every single day on Twitch.tv before slash L3WG. If you guys wanna check me out over there, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.